Hello and welcome to Bio's Exam Prep IAS. As part of a comprehensive news analysis today, we'll be discussing six important articles out of the Hindu newspaper. Good morning to all of you. So before we begin our analysis, let's look at the topics which we are going to discuss. Six important, seven subsidiary, just to know what is the bid. So first, we'll discuss about the Indian Ocean Rim Association, IORA. Thereafter, we'll talk about the Iron Dome, which has been in the news quite a lot. Thereafter, we'll talk about how the Ayush Ministry and the Centre is pushing for in the 11th revision of the WHO list for the incorporation of Ayurveda itself. Thereafter, we'll talk about green credit, which is an important concept for you generally for your GS Paper 3. Then, our Prime Minister has argued that he, we would like to host the 2036 Olympics, Summer Olympics in that regard. Then, a ferry issue which we already have discussed, but because it was inaugurated yesterday, it has been covered in the newspaper itself. And last but not the least, related to art and culture, something very interesting which is going to happen at the Red Fort in December. So, with this, let's start our analysis. As always, we'll talk about the basic concept first, then the nitty gritties and then we'll revise and in the end we have the main questions do like share and subscribe to the channel both the youtube and the telegram one once this session is over you will get five questions prelims oriented on the telegram channel itself so let's talk about the first topic which is iora or what is called indian ocean rim association and recently just on 11th october we had at colombo because sri lanka is the president now the council of ministers meeting and let's talk about this organization generally. First, let me give you the basics of it. And thereafter, we'll talk about the importance of IOR. So, first and foremost, 23 countries are there in the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Based on the fact that they mostly dot the Indian Ocean itself. And therefore, because of their proximity to the Indian Ocean, they basically are called the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Obviously, you don't have to learn the names as it is 23 names makes no sense. But you have Australia, Bangladesh, Comoros, France, France because of the Reunion Islands itself, India, Indonesia, Iran, Kenya, Madagascar, Malaysia, Maldives, Mauritius, Mozambique, Oman, Seychelles, Singapore, Somalia, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, along with Thailand, UAE and Yemen. And we have also observer or five or what we call as 11 dialogue partners in which you have China, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Germany, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Russia, Turkey, UK and US. Basically, if you add the 11 partners, it becomes a very big group with a lot of important countries in it. Now, obviously, I don't expect you to learn these 23 countries. What I want you to understand is that they basically are dotting the Indian Ocean and therefore they are, that is why they are important. And if we look at the data, and this again is all basic static related to IRA. If you look at the basic data, why does it really matter? What is the importance of this whole grouping, the 23 countries we are talking about? They are one third of the world's population. Further, 80% of all global oil trade, 50% of all cargo and 33% of all bulk cargo passes through it. Basically, this whole sector, the the sector itself is very important when it comes to population, the 23 countries. Over and above that, when we talk about the movement of cargo, it is also equally big. And therefore, these countries matter in global trade in that regard. When we talk about their economies, when brought together, they produce close to 1 trillion in goods and services. And the intra-IORA, which is the inter, the what is happening within this IORA trade is close to $800 billion, which is in itself also a very, very big amount. Now, we understand the basics. We understand the basics that it was first proposed by Nelson Mandela in 1995 in Delhi itself that all the Indian Ocean countries should come together. And thereafter, P.V. Narasimha Rao thereafter understood it and tried to push it. And thereafter, it led to the formation in 1997 of IORA itself. And the concept is very straightforward. The grouping, the apex body is all the foreign ministers. And every two years, there's a rotation in the presidency and the vice presidency. This time it's a very interesting thing that Sri Lanka is the president and India is the vice president. So all the power is in the South Asian sector itself because it is spanning through Africa, West Africa, the, the what we call as Southeast Asian countries, even Australia. And therefore this time power is concentrated here. So 
these are basic facts which you would find in standard books but that is not why we are doing this topic in that regard but just to repeat myself what we have is the Indian Ocean Rim Association the Council of Ministers meeting has happened in Colombo and the concept is very straightforward 23 countries are having something in common which is access to the Indian Ocean or the Arabian Sea or the Bay of Bengal and thereafter the apex body is the foreign ministers council and together they are a very important trading route and a lot of trade is generated in this sector so the three things which you first need to understand and I hope you understand that so what we've established till this point is the fact that IORA is important it is important and India is a very important part of this grouping itself so the Indian Ocean Rim Association IORA as I call it the point is that whilst it is important for trade 1 trillion 800 billion dollars whilst it is very very big when it comes to its population its consumption its demand it's very very important but for India it has even more significance and here I want you to pay attention because the static portion you'll find in any standard book here you have to understand the importance which is that see when we talk about any South Asian or Indo-Pacific organization there are two problems first is that either it is America-led which is for example a very good example of this would be Quad so here the problem is India is part of it along with Australia and Japan but the US controls most of Quad and as it is it is not very well defined in that sense and when we talk about anything else for example SARC which has more or less become redundant in that regard SCO in these type of organizations the problem is there are two irritants for us which is Pakistan and China so SCO would be both Pakistan and China SARC would be Pakistan now this means that the two types of organizations which we really have in one we don't really have any control because of the presence of the Americans and in the other we have two irritants which mostly block or have made these organizations either a contest of how the conflict can go forward or there is a lot of tension which builds up and India in that sense is balancing in both it is balancing in quad itself because here you have a giant like America in it and on the other hand in the others for example the South Asian organizations we have China which is also a problem for us and Pakistan which is also a problem for us and therefore the IORA becomes important in this context because if you very closely look at the nations list not the dialogue partners there is no Pakistan and there is no China there is no Pakistan and there is no China and in that sense IORA is emerging as a very important and a word which is used in this newspaper itself a safe space wherein India is one of the most important countries in this 23 grouping itself though we have France but basically economy wise presence wise strategic location wise we have India as one of the most important country in this grouping and we don't have to balance but rather we have to dominate and we have the opportunity to lead this organization and this is something which India always wanted in both these organizations for example quad or any other organization in which America is there we don't have breathing space because either we have to look at the mood of America America being a moody power itself always tries to dictate what it is or we are in a certain organization group in which we already have two members who are actively trying to destroy India so here in IORA we call it a safe space because here India can be what it should be and the potentialities of its leadership comes through so the importance of IORA and why are we discussing it is because of this only the aspect related to the fact that is the absence of the US as a active member absence of Pakistan and the absence of China 
these three actors are not there. And therefore, these West African countries, the Southeast Asian countries, the countries which are involved except for Australia, which would be a big actor, all other countries look towards India for its leadership. And therefore, India's role in this becomes important and most of its allies are also aligned in this grouping itself. So there are two things which you need to understand and that is why we are discussing this topic itself which is that first what is IORA I think you understand it Indian Ocean Rim Association they share the space of the Indian Ocean and 23 countries are there with 11 dialogue partners but dialogue partners don't have decision making power and that is why even though we have the presence of the US, the UK and even Germany, Italy and China they are not active partners of this grouping and therefore what is important for us is the fact that we can dominate this group and this is coming out to be and it is very refreshing for India because either in the Indo-Pacific or the South Asian sector we have US led organizations or these two irritants in some form there already and Pakistan wanted to enter this organization and because this organization is based on consent when the most favored nation tag which is given in W was not given to India by Pakistan. India blocked the entry of Pakistan into Iora and that has remained like that till now. And this is why we can see that we can use this fruitfully to its potentiality with no irritants and no active balancing within the organization itself. These are very important points I am trying to make here. I will repeat it in the end again but let me give you that perspective also because IORA is a refreshing break for India where it is not in the domination of the Americans, where it is not balancing two irritant powers which is Pakistan and China. So, we understand what it is, what is its structure and what is its inception. Now, while Quad is making progress, it is a US led organization. Meanwhile, China already has the Belt and Road Initiative, the OBOR. The problem is that it is spreading its wings throughout the Indo-Pacific itself, but it is also having problems because of debt issues. And be it Belt and Road Initiative or China's any initiative in this sector, we have to actively balance China. And if that was not enough, then there is Pakistan in most of these groupings, which makes it problematic. So, the focus of IORA is in seven priorities, priority areas. First is maritime safety because very important route. Then trade and investment. Again, don't have to learn this just to give you a basic understanding. Fisheries because very important fishing route and fishing sector itself. Disaster risk management because most of these countries are vulnerable to tsunamis and ocean based disasters. Academic science and technology, so there can be better understanding of research and development. Tourism and cultural exchanges. Again, what is common to most of these countries, very beautiful and have a long cultural relationship because of the Indian Ocean. Gender empowerment, which is again the issue that most of these countries share a problem when it comes to representation of women. So they work for it. And there's also a dedicated fund for anything related to climate change. So if you look at it very, very broad and in all of this, India can independently develop and steer the IORA. This is a very important point because this is something which India is not able to do in a US led organization or in an organization where China and Pakistan are there because they tend to make it problematic or they add elements which should not have been there. Therefore, why is it important? Because it is a safe space for India, wherein these countries can come together with no big powers in rivalry and no irritants in the picture itself. And in 2001, Pakistan did try to get admitted to the IORA. However, once the most favored nation tag was not given to India by Pakistan, a very standard WTO concept, then India blocked it and thereafter since then IORA has not admitted Pakistan because it is consent based and SCO as you know when Russia added India, China added Pakistan and SCO also became problem for us. So let's try to summarize this whole thing which is that why am I doing it, what is the concept and what is the importance. So we know that the Indian Ocean Rim Association is important in the context of the 
the cultural maritime and what we call as cooperation based diplomatic relationship we also understand that there are 23 countries in it and we also understand that most of them the two most important countries which are not there are china and pakistan and equally important the us is not a member and the iora as i said council of foreign ministers is the apex body they meet the presidency rotates every two years as of right now sri lanka is the president india is the vice president so it is in south asia itself now when we talk about the numbers very very important third of the population 1 trillion trade 800 billion trade very very important now what is the importance for india the importance for india of iora is that it does not have irritants it does not have big power rivalry and therefore it emerges as a safe space for us safe space and over and above that it is equally important because india can lead india can evolve and india can also steer the iora in the direction it wants to take and therefore this is all about counterbalancing china and pakistan but specifically china pakistan already is a beggar right now but china china is doing the same through the belt and road initiative iora becomes a counterbalancing act for india and this is the basic point why again why am i doing it because of this word safe space you will see in a mains question this can be asked and the importance of iora is already increasing they have already asked a question in the prelims examination about the indian ocean Rim association now we can expect a mains question because of the growing importance in the indian foreign policy and diplomatic sphere itself so this is the first topic which we've covered and i hope you understand it basic point what is the 23 countries which are involved again 23 countries all sharing the indian ocean space itself 11 dialog partners apex body council of foreign ministers over and above that right now south asian region dominates it when it comes to vice presidency and vice presidency and over and above that it was first conceptualized by nelson mandela thereafter india took a lot of interest in this form of organization and today it has emerged as a very important safe space for india this is what you have to remember here now with this let's move to the second important topic something which you would have heard throughout the newspaper throughout news channels on social media platforms something called the iron dome now let's try to understand the iron dome see the term iron dome is basically used for short range missile interception technology which the israelis use and it is basically israel plus the us who have developed it and therefore it is a very interesting system and has been a savior with 97% accuracy for israelis over a period of time now let's take an example very straight forward example that you have this is the gaza sector which would be palestinian sector this is israel and this would be the de facto border if you want to argue with their very smart fence which they have but as we know hamas has a tendency of launching rockets now there are two types there is a very important distinction that for example this area has a town this area has a town this is habitable area however everything else in this sector has no habitation for example this much area you have a city a town israeli town is there but other places it is not there now what will happen is in the iron dome system very straight forward they have three units one is a radar one is a radar the other one is a small control unit and the next one would be a canister launch missile system would be a canister launch missile system now what happens is for example a 
a Hamas soldier from here launched a standard basic short range missile for example a short range missile was going towards this area now there are two ways for example if the intended path of this missile is on a habitable area and he launches another rocket which goes like this and it is going to an barren area first thing what the iron dome system does which is the the rockets here are called the Tamir rockets what the radar will do is that it will scan both the rockets and what it will determine is that based on the trajectory of the second rocket it is going to hit a, a barren area and non habitable area it will not intercept this one because the Tamir rocket determines that or the radar system along with its control system determines that there is no need for intercepting a rocket which is going to go into a barren area uh, open field what it will do it will intercept this one because it is going towards a habitable area now for example this is the rocket which is going towards the habitable area and it is going towards the habitable area what the iron dome system does is the radar will identify it thereafter it will find its trajectory and a rocket will be launched from the Tamil system itself and what happens is that the rocket from the Tamil system intercepts the rocket and blows up in front of it or next to it thereby destroying the rocket next to it or intercepting it successfully you will get these spectacles in the night when the iron dome system works in the night it happens like this which is you can see that these are rockets which are incoming and the iron dome system has in a way started to intercept them and the simple point is if the, a rocket is going like this it will come and explode in front of it or close to it so as to destroy the rocket itself to be very precise four systems uh, three systems are there you have the enemy rocket fired thereafter the radar will identify control system will estimate where should it impact and the Tamir rocket will be fired fired and it will then intercept the rocket and therefore therefore destroying it but very important it ignores incoming threats which land in a unhabitable or a area which is open so this is a very important distinction which it makes it will not waste the rocket it does not waste rockets so this system for the past 10 to 15 years has a 97 percent hit rate wherein the Israelis could trust the Iron Dome and most of the Hamas based rocket attacks which has happened till this point a Hamas based attack more or less had never hit a Israeli habitable area or the people were protected by the Iron Dome now this is a Rafale based system Rafale is a US company in that sense not the salt Rafale but Rafale is a company you can see here it says Rafale advanced defense system this is an American model it's an American company now that is why it is equally interesting for us to understand now the point is then what happened on 7th October what happened on 2nd 7th October what happened to the radar system what happened to the Tamir rockets now here the Hamas actually found a solution to the iron dome see the iron dome works well if you have for example in this canister seven rockets for example now in this canister there are seven rockets which means that it can intercept seven rockets incoming from the Hamas sector what the iron dome has is basically a limited capacity to intercept you would need to mobilize more of these rockets it takes time to reload them you you could have 1000 rockets lying around but the canister launch will only take for example seven eight ten so what the Hamas did is they launched 2200 rockets at one time and what happened was that the iron dome concept or the iron dome technology got overwhelmed and it was not able to understand which one to intercept which one to not intercept the reloading time was too high and that is why the Hamas was able to hit multiple sectors in the Israeli area 
and this is because the Hamas found a way to overwhelm the system. The radars cannot cannot take too much information and too much information was given to the radars and even if it can identify 15 rockets coming through it can only intercept seven at a time so three will for example be going to uh, being uh, are going to evade the system in that regard imagine 2200 rockets at one point of time it was a proper proper planned one by one within the uh, difference between of what we call as 10 to 15 minutes 2200 rockets were launched so the iron dome concept in that sense has now shown its weakness also now why we are discussing it because israel tried to push iron dome to india but israel did not tell us one thing that it does not have one system but a four layered system see this is short range the israelis have a four layered system in which iron dome is the short range one Thereafter, you have what is called the David Sling, named after the Star of David itself, and then Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 system. India was offered Iron Dome, but the point was India saw no utility of Iron Dome on our borders because it is more man based or what we call as terrorist based, personnel based infiltration on our borders rather than rocket based. And for that, we already have intercepting rockets, we already have the Pinaka system, which is quite effective in that sense, and therefore. The problem was Iron Dome was of no purpose to us. Short range was of no purpose to us until unless the terrorists started to fly into the air itself. However, we argued that give us Arrow 2 or Arrow 3, which is longer range. And that technology has not been tested by the Israelis quite a lot, but is also in the conception because just day before yesterday, a medium range fired by Hamas. And which was actually intercepted by David Sling. And therefore, it means that Hamas has a lot of very advanced rocket sets, which could be very, very dangerous for Israel in the larger context. One country, and you could guess it, has been asking for the Iron Dome quite a lot, which is Ukraine. It has been arguing that give us Iron Dome because it could help us against the Russians. And therefore, there's a major demand for the Iron Dome as of right now. But the Hamas has also shown the weakness of this system. So there are two reasons why I'm doing this topic with you. First is to explain the whole concept to you. Radar system, control system, the mean rocket. Thereafter, interception by blowing it up next to the rocket itself. And Hamas has found a solution for it. Overwhelm the system itself. Second is India was offered by Israel the Iron Dome, but Iron Dome makes no sense as it is our terrain in which the infiltration is, is, all, is all, also very different. This is flat terrain, that is mountainous terrain or marshy terrain when it comes to Gujarat and even desert terrain when it comes to the Rajasthan sector. And therefore, we have no purpose for that, but we are more interested for the other systems. This is a US based system which the Israelis have been given and effectively has worked for the past 10 years but this time it did not work and that is why multiple questions have been raised so i hope you understand that on october 7th at 6 30 local time in israel there were multiple sirens which were there but with 2200 rockets fired by the hamas there was no way the iron dome was actually going to intercept all of them and that in turn led to the first wave of attack now as i said enemy rocket there are three basic units, radar system, control unit, launcher. And thereafter, the Iron Dome concept is very straightforward. It is a short range, anti-rocket, anti-motor, anti-artillery system. 2.5 to 43 miles in that regard. So it will maximum, maximum take you 60, 60, 65, 70, 60, 65, 70 kilometers maximum. And has been developed by the US. And while the iron dome which was used by israelis was a 10 radar system basically there are 10 points at which the radar system and the control units and the rockets were there and they defend basically 60 square miles of population one system has the responsibility of protecting it as it is if it goes into a barren territory it does not really matter what it happened what happens is that it looks at the trajectory it intercepts it and it fires Tamir rockets 
and 97 percent interception rate was there now it would not be that much because of the fact that how 2200 rockets undercut that now israel does not have one system but a four layered system in which you have the iron dome short range david sling low to medium range arrow two and arrow three this is what india is interested about which is upper atmospheric and exo atmospheric upper atmospheric would be once the ballistic missile enters into the atmosphere exo atmospheric would be once it is already in its what we call as parabolic path when it is in orbit or has left the atmosphere so as to take the kinetic energy or take the potential energy and enter into the india into the uh, earth's atmosphere in that regard three billion dollars have been provided by the u.s in supporting this system and the iron dome has always been a very important system which israel has advocated to most of its allies now when we talk about the indian angle we were pushed or we were touted for or pitched the iron dome for the loc however the way infiltration happens along our loc or lac is the fact that close range threats are not based on rocket fire and therefore india wants the arrow system not the iron dome system so before again we move to the third topic let's understand why did we do this topic first straightforward point iron dome us israel based concept it is short range anti missile anti mortar anti artillery system only intercepts if it is going to hit a populated area has a radar system which tells the control system to calculate the interception point and the tamir rockets are fired to then take and the tamir rockets is a is a american rocket which has been named tamir and thereafter the most important concept 97% interception rate was there hamas found a solution for it which is overwhelm the system 2200 rockets fired at one go and therefore the iron dome was not able to figure out what to intercept and therefore what we see as of right now for india we have now seen a weakness good india did not buy this system from the israelis we should go for the arrow system which is better which is a ballistic missile based anti ballistic missile system which the israelis also have that has also been developed by the us for the israelis and that shows their relationship with the americans israelis have always had an edge because of american technology available to them generally so two topics first we've discussed the iron dome or second we've discussed the iron dome and first we try to understand how the iora has become important for india's diplomatic and foreign policy now we move to a very small topic but an interesting one which is that india is seeking the inclusion of traditional medicine to the who list of medicines in that regard so as of right now the 11th revision of the world health organizations international classification of diseases is happening and what india wants is that because after decades of what we call as pushing and lobbying chinese medicine was added to this icd which is international classification of diseases and medicines india wants ayurveda to be added to it because in india and because across the world we need to have standardization and we have need to have uniformity this inclusion will be a major push for indian traditional medicine and the ayurvedic system it gives recognition also and it is important therefore and the icd is important because it is a common language that allows for health professionals to share standardized information across the world and traditional medicine module is being added as a new diagnostic category and a medicinal category in that regard and standardization that in that way is important because if you are administering for example ashwagandha for something in india it should also be advocated in america for that so therefore you need the who icd for standardization across the world wherein the same dosage is given the same thing is given for the same issue and ayurveda automatically becomes a very important candidate for traditional medicine in india to be added to it and therefore it needs to be included and would be a important boost to the indian soft power we already know that for a decade after repetitive consultations chinese japanese and korean medicine have been added 
and those are also based on much lesser principles than Ayurveda. We have multiple texts which talk about Ayurveda and therefore we need to make sure that India gets Ayurveda included in the 11th, if not the 11th but 12th revision for sure. And that is a very important point which the center has also recognized. And this is something which India is also pushing at the world level. Which is that in the module 2, module 1 is Chinese medicine, module 2 will be Ayurveda. And here in the Ayush ministry is helping in creating a portal, the information which needs to go through and the standardization across the world. Because if I call it Ash, what we call as Ashwagandha, Everybody will not be able to call it Ashwagandha. So we need a standardized name for it. And therefore, in this, the Ayush ministry has to play an important role. Small topic but important that traditional medicine in India is getting in that sense a lot of recognition across the world. And therefore, we need to make sure that it becomes a part of the ICD of the WHO. And the 11th revision is happening. India is pushing for it. Already Chinese medicine had added, so which means which means that we have precedence for it. Now we can also push it as a concept, very straightforward. So simple, straightforward topic. Now, three topics done. We've done Iora, we've done Iron Dome, we've done this. This is a developing concept. We'll see where it goes. Now comes the last and a very interesting topic, which is called green credit. Now let's try to understand what is this concept of green credit. Again, I'll give you the basic understanding. Then we'll go into the nitty gritty and then we will go into the prelims bite section. So, what is green credit? It's very straightforward. I'm an individual or for example, I'm a company. What I do is that I've not been obligated by law. Very important point. I've not been obligated by law. I've not been obligated by any policy. And I plant, for example, 1000 trees. And this company, for example, 1 lakh trees are planted, which is afforestation by an individual or an, an company. So an individual and a company have pushed for afforestation. Now what the government of India is doing is, I can go to the website of the Ministry of Climate Change, Forest and the, the environment and I can register under a portal that I planted 1000 trees. I have to register here. They will come and inspect and if they believe that I have done it in the right way without obligation by law, I would be given credits. For example, 1000 green credits. The same would be true for this company. It will go to this website, register its activity, inspection is going to happen. Thereafter, for example, 1 lakh green credits are credited to the company. Now it is not just afforestation. You can have tree plantation, water management, sustainable agriculture, waste management, air pollution or mangrove conservation and restoration. If you are doing any of these eight activities, you are eligible to get green credits after you go and register on the website itself. So to get the green credit, one needs to register the activity with the administrator of the through a website. The activity will be verified by an agency and based on the report, they will grant green credit certificate. So it basically becomes a type of incentive based concept for green activities unit of an incentive provided for specific activities to deliver positive impact to the environment so very simply everything any green activity which i do which is not mandated by law to me if i've cut one lakh trees and i'm planting one lakh trees that makes no sense which is compensatory afforestation if i'm doing a green activity and it is under these eight different activities or, or previews which the government of India has identified, I can get these green credits. Now these green credits are certificates which I have. Now in itself it has no purpose. In itself you can feel good that you put in 1 lakh trees or 1000 trees. What the government of India is doing is it wants to also create a dedicated exchange 
or a dedicated agency which can trade in these green credits which is to give it economic value this is about incentivizing green activities so for example for example the agency could decide that one green credit could be equal to for example 50 pesos and the company could get a certain amount of cashback incentive subsidy if they are doing this type of activity. This is an interesting way of incentivizing green activity both at the individual level and at the company corporate level. And that is why this is a very interesting way in pushing for sustainable future. So there are three things again which you need to understand here. First is green credit is an incentive for anything you do which has a positive impact on the environment. Eight areas have been identified where you do it, you will get green credit. You have to register it, verification will happen and you will get certificates. But the third aspect is create a dedicated exchange where you can trade in these green credits in order to either offset certain other issues and this is over and above any other subsidy which government of India is giving right now and we can give an economic value or an incentive to these credits itself therefore allowing the corporates to not be mandated by law but automatically take green activities this is the important point you need to understand here so we understand that there is a special program which is going to come for individuals and entities to earn green credit and have a dedicated exchange to trade it so think of it like stock and as we know, eight areas have been identified where if you get it registered with the government of India, you will get a green credit certificate. We are trying to create an incentive for a market based approach for incentivizing environmental action by various stakeholders. This is the de what we'll technical definition of it, market based approach based on competitive understanding in which you are incentivizing environmental activities by different stakeholders. Now, there are two very important riders on this. First is that this incent in incentivization is going to be positive only for generating green credit if it has not been in a way subscribed or prescribed by the law. So if the law says or a company has been mandated by a law to do this afforestation, it will not get it. It will only get it if it is doing it voluntarily. And this is a very important point you need to understand. Which is that it has to be a voluntary action. And this could be a game changer in this space in that regard. So, before we move to the prelims by section, let me bring all the four topics we've done together. First is the importance of IORA. A safe space for India with no Pakistan, China and the US at a leadership role or at an active role. And therefore, India can use it to counterbalance China in that regard in the Indian Ocean world. Thereafter, we try to understand the Iron Dome. Considered a very formidable system, but Hamas has shown if you overwhelm the radars, it cannot work. But India was given it, uh, was in a way offered the Iron Dome, but India rejected it. India wants the arrow system. And this failed because of the overwhelming number of rockets which were fired, US based system. Thereafter, we try to understand how the WHO is revising its ICD and India wants Ayurveda to be added to it. Last but not the least is the concept of green credit. As I explained to you, you can voluntarily gain green credits if you are doing green activities under the eight things which have been identified by the government of India. And if you are doing it, you will automatically get green credit which can be traded at dedicated exchanges and could be incentivized in the larger run. It's a competitive market-based market approach to environmental protection and incentivization for each and every stakeholder. These are the four big topics which we needed to cover. As it is Sunday newspaper, you don't have the editorial section, but we've tried to understand these four in the first 40 to 45 minutes. Now let's move to the Prims Byte section. Small section, straightforward, just have to know the facts here and then we'll discuss the main questions. So, First is that India is bidding to host the 2036 Olympics and our Prime Minister has publicly articulated the fact that India has the aspiration to hold the 2036 Summer Olympics in India. We don't know which city will do it but as of right now India as an entity has shown willingness. 
He also mentioned the fact that India won against Pakistan yesterday in the same platform itself. It would be significant for you and me and for Asia generally because India, India would be the fourth to become the only fourth Asian country to host the games. This is going to be significant. So here again, the, the fourth concept is very important to become the only fourth Asian country to do it. So we are bidding to do it. We don't know if we will get it or not. If we do it, if we do get it, it's the fourth. And over and above that, he also talked about the victory in the World Cup against Pakistan, which in itself was quite significant and very, very overwhelming for all of us. So Prime Minister Modi has talked about the 2036 Olympics. Let's see where this goes in the long run. Thereafter, this is something which I have discussed with you previously also which is the fact that there is now after 40 years, four decades, a ferry system which has been developed, which has now been inaugurated by the Prime Minister between Nagapatnam in the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu and the Kanakesh Tharui sector of Sri Lanka. This is very significant because this could in a way connect these countries more, allow Sri Lanka to become pro-India, which was going towards pro-China, Further, it allows for connectivity between two sectors which are very trade active and therefore are very, very significant in the larger context of our relationship with Sri Lanka, which should be because it's an immediate neighbor. It should be positive in that sense. So this again, we've already discussed. Just have to remember these two names because this can be asked in the prelims examination. Thereafter, this is art and culture current affairs that in December we will have an Indian art and architecture design biennial, which is nothing but one event which happens twice in two years once it happens. So biennial. Now this will be organized by the Ministry of Culture. Why is it important? Because this will showcase different parts of India at the Red Fort. So the place where it is going to be is going to be the Red Fort. Over and above that, both digital and physical form, different types of exhibitions will be created. The thematic is going to be doors of India, gardens of India, baulis, temples, architectural wonders, indigenous design and women in architecture and design. If we you have an opportunity between December 9th and 15th, if this happens in Redford, I recommend every UPSC aspirant to go there because it will be a spectacle in itself. It will help you revise art and culture. But this is going to be a very important addition to how we are celebrating art and culture and how we conserve and preserve it. So. Before we go to the main question, we've done three very simple straightforward topics, a bid for Olympics, the concept that we will, we will try to get that bid by 2036. Over and above that, we've tried to understand the Red Fort based first, very important Indian art and architecture design banner. And over and above that, a ferry system between Sri Lanka and India. Iora, the concept of green credit, the concept of Iron Dome, and WHO. Four big topics for your mains level preparation. Let's look at the mains question and try to understand how we will tackle that also. Question number one. Iora remains a safe space for India and other countries of the region that wish to keep out the constant challenge of big power rivalries. This again, I picked up the line from the newspaper and given you a question comment. This is actually how questions can be made and are made GS paper too very important. Thereafter, what is green credit? How is it the answer to India's green future? This again is a very realistic question for GS paper 3 and I hope you will answer it. So with this, I would like to end the session. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.